Hi, this is Justin Bailey, and I'm an American writer. I also like Guinness. Cheers. I'm an American writer trying to get published. Why in God's name on on YouTube? Well, that is a very good question. The answer is these days, if you want to be a writer, you have no choice but to do YouTube, Twitter. You have to go in the internet. You have to be social, which, trust me, any writer, it is not easy being social at all. In fact, it kills me every moment I'm speaking to a camera. That said, I wrote a novel called Dungeon. It took me over two years to write it, six months to plan it, but I can't help but think it's pretty damn good, because otherwise, if I didn't, I wouldn't be talking to a YouTube internet camera. Here we are. Let's get cracking. I plan to read my whole novel to you chapter by chapter, and fortunately for me, I happen to know a very good Japanese artist. So, let's do it, put our serious face on, here we go. Thank you. The Dungeon by Justin M. Bailey Level 1-1 Ogre Dungeon Ogre Dungeon was filled to the brim with all sorts of fiends. Orcs, moblins, trolls, dwarves, manlings, and yes, ogres. Lots and lots of ogres. But Ogre Dungeon had never seen anything quite like Garland McMillan. McMillan was an elf. An elf that had everything you or I could ever want. Money, power, fame, magical powers. And yet he threw it all away one night, on the night he decided to commit the largest mass murder in all of Autumn's history. It was his 20th birthday party. For his 20th birthday party, McMillan didn't celebrate by opening presents or eating cake. He, uh, well, he celebrated by lighting up his party guests like a bunch of candles, only to blow them out and sing, Happy birthday to me. But the party didn't stop there. Now, with wand in hand, McMillan celebrated on throughout the night by burning his manor, and everyone in it, to the ground, along with half of his town of Ruto and every creature within magical striking distance. It took no less than twelve rangers, only nine of which survived, to finally take him down and pry that magical wand out of his hand. The following morning, none of Autumn could believe what they read across the pages of the Herald. Not an elf would ever believe, not in a million years, that the word Macmillan and murder would ever be in the same headline, or in the same sentence together. I mean, here was a young noble that everybody thought was going to be king someday. Here was a young noble that invented the famous magical red potion, the white mage in a bottle, as the heralds called it. And here was a young noble that had given half of his profits to charity, someone everybody thought was a symbol of Autumn's hopes and dreams, and yet here was a noble that turned out to be a living nightmare instead. The trial of the century soon began, raging on for months, and all the while Macmillan wouldn't say a peep. Not to the legislature, not to the papers, not to anyone. It had seemed that the horror of his crimes had reduced McMillan to nothing more than a shell. A comatose zombie of an elf that would barely eat or even look you in the eye. But when Magistrate finally laid judgment, 484 life sentences, one for every victim, McMillan raised his head to look someone in the eyes once more. Macmillan stared directly at the magistrate, directly through the magistrate, with eyes scarier than the words that were about to follow. Kill me, Macmillan said, and everyone in the court went silent. Kill me. Kill me now, or I swear, I will escape someday, and I will burn all the bottom to the ground along with all of you. The papers called him Macmillan's last spell. He left in chains, laughing, and saying the number one to himself over and over again. Former Lord Garland Macmillan was soon escorted from out of the Ruto courtroom, soon to be transported to Ogre Dungeon. But Macmillan's quest, request 
would forever be denied. He would not be executed. Elves don't execute. It's not considered very elf-like for him. What is considered elf-like is to lock every single creature away that isn't really that elf-like into a deep, dark dungeon, throw away the key, and pretend they never existed. That is very elf-like. Garland Macmillan exited out the back of the courtroom. The magistrate tried calming and assuring every elf, woman, and child in the courtroom that <laughs> no one has ever escaped from Mogar Dungeon, and that none of you will ever see his face again. But the truth was, the magistrate saw Macmillan's face all the time after that day. Every time he shut his eyes and went to sleep. I would like to thank Nobudo Uramatsu for composing that music I used from Final Fantasy VI. My name is Justin Bailey. Thank you. And drink a Guinness.